another beautiful day and um, I wanted to say that our celebration today is twofold first we are nearing the end of March and the celebration of Women's History Month all of us are making our history now the women in here we're making our history now someday people will speak of us in a past tense and what do we want them to say about us how do we want to be remembered we understand the Proverbs 31 we love all those attributes but there's one scripture in Proverbs 31 that sticks out to me is verse 30. It says that beauty is deceitful. No, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So while the world is looking at us from the outside in, looking at our complexion, looking at our weight, looking at the clothes we wear, the tags inside of our clothes, what designer we wear, what bags we carry. God is looking at our heart. As a woman, in, as us making history as a woman, we make history in God. What we do for him, the service we give him, how we honor him. So that's our history as a God-fearing woman to show the world how to walk upright and what we should look like. Because when we're beautiful on the inside, we're beautiful on the outside. And we let God judge our heart. We don't let the world tell us how to dress, how to speak, how to walk. That's why some of us can't get a man sometimes. We worry about the, what the world say. If we walk the way God asks you to walk, he'll come for you. He'll come for you. Everything will fall in place. So we thank God for that. But um, the second and more importantly, this is Palm Sunday. Let us continue to cry out to Hosanna and let Jesus be our Prince of Peace. Our mighty God, our everlasting Father, let him be all that to us. Um, and he's our everything, our healer and our provider. Whatever you need God to be for you today, just reach out to him and touch him, and he'll be that for you. And I'm just going to read a few scriptures of um, the triumphal entry. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethage, at the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a coat, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the coat and laid their clothes on them and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So will we cry out Hosanna? Is he Hosanna for you today? Are you excited about the coming Christ? Are you excited that he died? Are you excited that he rose? And in these coming weeks when we celebrate Easter, it's okay to do the bunny. You can buy the chocolate bunny. You can have the Easter speeches. You can do the Easter egg hunts. But never, ever forget if he didn't rise that morning, we wouldn't be here. We'd never have a right to the tree of life. We would never see it, the side of heaven that we're looking for. We would never be by his side and be able to praise him at the throne all day, every day. So we just thank God for Hosanna, who's everything to us, our king, our prince of peace. There's no reason to go to bed worried. We have a prince of peace, a peace that passeth all understanding. And let us bow our heads in prayer. 
Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We're asking you just to help us to remember what you did for us on the cross. We ask you to remember that you're everything that we need. We're asking you to help us remember that you'll be our oncologist, that you'll be our healer, that you'll be our judge, you'll be our jury, you'll be the one with the compassion, the one with the mercy, the one with the grace. Help us to remember you're the one that saved us, you're the one that keeps us. Help us to remember that we praise you with our hearts and minds and that only you are to be honored in the highest, that we're to say hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for our hosanna. Lord, just help us to praise you with all our being today. And we just thank you for everyone on the sound of my voice, that we will come together as one unit, one body in Christ, praying one for another and having that love run from heart to heart and mind to mind and soul to soul, that we may stay united and stand against the evils and the wiles of the devil. Because people, we have to love God and love each other. And Lord, we just thank you for everything. We love you, we trust you, we thank you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
We thank you for your presence this morning. Our scripture text is from John's Gospel, chapter 10. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10 will be our sermon text for this morning. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Let us pray together. Into your presence now, O oh God, we come with prayer and supplication. We lift our voices unto the one who is the author and the finisher of our faith, the one who walked with us through the night, the one who causes the sun to rise right early this morning, the one who keeps everything balanced and in its place. The one who is sovereign. The one who, who is the great I am that I am. The one that shows up in a burning bush. The one that comes walking in the middle of the night upon the waters. The one who hung on yonder's cross, the one who descended into death, the one who rose. We say thank you this morning, God, for being all those things in all those ways. For being our peace in the midst of trouble, for being our hope, for being our love, for being our comfort. We say thank you, God. We say thank you for being our strength, our sustainer, the one who keeps us from losing our minds when things come unloose and unfastened and when world, the world spins out of control around us. The bad news comes one hour after another hour after another hour, but yet we hold on to hope. For we know, O oh Lord, that thou art still in control when it seems like everything is out of control. When gunmen walk into movie theaters and gun brothers and sisters down. When bombs go off and destroy hospitals and patients. When men fight with weapons of mass destruction. We still know that you are God. When storms roll through and destroy homes, property, and lives, and there is nothing we can do, we still know that you're in charge. And God, we praise your name. There's no other name under the heavens from which we can call upon. But as we settle in this place of worship this morning, God, we come with a hope renewed. We come, God, determined to lift up your name before all of humanity. We come this morning, oh God, to say thank you for what you have done in our private lives. But we come with a corporate voice and together and collectively we praise your name. We sing the songs of Zion. We lift you up before all humanity. We say that thou art the great I am, that thou art the great everlasting unto everlasting thou art God and we say thank you from our place from our perch from our seats from our standing from our kneeling we say thank you you are the mighty God and we say thank you for being our God this morning we hold the hope that you bring on the wings of the morning of the new day of the new beginning of the fresh start of the day we say thank you God yesterday is gone and we say farewell, but we say welcome this morning that our hearts might wake up and praise you for the fresh start of today. God, we lift ourselves before you. We bow ourselves before you in adoration, saying thank you, almighty God, for being God, for being sovereign. Our hope, our trust lies in you. And we say thank you. Just for the ability to open our mouths and humbly say thank you for all 
all that thou have been and all that you are, we say thank you. We praise you, God, for all of life today, the good, the bad, the ugly, that is yet, uh, yet to come. We say thank you. We open ourselves up to say thank you for operations that were successful. We say thank you for, for, for doors that were open. We say thank you for healings that have taken place. We say thank you, God, for being our God in the midst of our lives, even when we don't recognize you for who you are. We don't offer the praise that you deserve. It does not stop you from loving us. It does not stop you from caring for us. It does not stop you from meeting our needs. It does not in any way hinder you when our lips are silent. You just keep being God and we say thank you. Thank you. We say thank you for being there in the midst of cancer treatments. We say thank you for being there in the midst of when we have returned to the bottle and began to sink our sorrows through alcohol. We say thank you for being still God of our lives, for being there saying, my son, my daughter, I have a cure for your disease. Come to me and find rest. God, we lift you up. We lift you up because you deserved to be lifted up. We lift you up because there is no other name. We lift you up. And we know, God, that you are lifting us up. Thank you. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way this day. This hour, this moment, have your way. Do what you do, God, in the way in which you do it. You know what we need. Before we even ask, you are acquainted with us so intimately. You know what we need this morning. Give us what we need this morning, God. And give, us, and give it to us in the way that we need. Maybe we just need to sing ourselves happy. Maybe we just need to pray ourselves happy. Maybe we just need to shout ourselves happy. Maybe we just need to pat our feet happy. Just maybe this morning, God, all we need to do is just sit in your presence. But we are here. We say thank you. Have your way, God. Have your way. May our singing, may our praying, may our preaching, may our worship not be in vain. May what we do bring honor and glory to you. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the precious Holy Spirit, we offer this prayer in thanksgiving. Amen, amen, and amen.
you got to feel they didn't have the instruments. <laughs> but you got to feel Amen. what it was like on that day Amen. when he came in riding Amen. on a donkey and the people began to proclaim him yes. with Hosanna. Yes. Amen. I got a feeling if they had the instruments, they'd still be at it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for participating in our worship that this is not a spectator Amen. event. Amen. We are all engaged Amen. in worship. Amen. Amen. So if you, if you come, and, and I need to say this, because we need to understand the context of worship. If you come to be entertained, you're in the wrong place. Amen. There is something going on between the pulpit, the choir, and the congregation. Amen. Everybody is engaged yes. in this process. So please keep that in mind when you enter into worship. You are never a spectator. Amen. Please remember that. Please remember that. Your worship will take on a whole different meaning. If you can remember that once you enter the sanctuary, you are a participant, not a spectator. Yeah. We go to, to, to events to observe, mm -hmm. but never do we come to worship to observe. Amen. We are a primary player in the drama that unfolds every time we come together in worship. So please keep that in the back of your mind or at the forefront of your mind, but keep it on your mind whenever you enter the sanctuary. Something is going to happen that you are a part of in a mighty way from start to finish. Amen. From start to finish. Amen. 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 Let us continue our, our praise and worship as we bring forth our tithes and offerings. <laughs> say as an offering, a part of ourselves, that which thou hast given unto us, and now we return you a portion. Please, O oh God, we humbly present to you what is thine. Accept it, O oh Lord, in the portion in which it was given. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit, we pray. scripture this morning is from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, from the New Revised Standard Version. Very truly, I tell you, 
Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and lead them out. When he has bought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus says to them, Verily, verily, I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of God for the people of God and the people of God said, Amen. Amen.
I gotta make, okay, there we go. So I will continue reading from the sermon text for this morning from John 10. I will begin reading at verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and run away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father know, knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. 
I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. Again, the Jews were divided because of these words, many of them saying he was a demon and is out of his mind. Why listen to him? Others were saying, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? If you were asked to identify yourself as a particular character or person, what would you choose? What would be your identity? What would represent you? What person would you most identify with that would give you that special glow, that special status? Would you identify with a particular athlete or actor? Would you identify with a relative or a friend or a former professor or someone that was important in your life? Who would you choose? What would you choose? Would you be a superhero? There's some particular superhero that you like. Would you be Superwoman? Would you be Spider-Man? Would you, who would you be? Would you be the Incredible Hulk? Some of you recognize that. I don't know if they have an Incredible Hulk cartoon anymore. But I know they do have Spider-Man and Superman and Superwoman and all of these new characters they got. Who would you be? What would be your identity? Who would you best embody you in your spirit and your personality? Who would that be? Well, I find it strange that Jesus decides to make his identity wrapped in a shepherd. A one who works with smelly, stubborn, disobedient, awkward sheep. That's where he lays his identity. Do you not find that strange? The religious authorities were threatened by him. They were intimidated by him. But yet here in John's gospel, he says, I am the good shepherd. You want to know what I'm like? I'm like a shepherd. A shepherd? Is a shepherd threatening? Is a shepherd intimidating? Is a shepherd one of authority? You ever saw? Well, hold up, back up. Stick a pen in it. We don't know nothing about shepherds, do we? It's not a cultural thing for us. So therefore, we have no connection to it. So, so we, we say, hold up, Pastor. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, no. Shepherd. No. I don't think I would want to be shepherd. I, don't. I just read about him. I've seen them standing here by the manger with a towel wrapped around the head with the bathrobe on. That's as close as we get to shepherds. But if you go to some countries, they still exist. They're still there, they play that role. When we look in the Old Testament, we hear David saying that the Lord is my shepherd. We hear him saying, I shall not want, that he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear not. Why? My shepherd's with me. So we get this picture from, from, from the Psalms of what a shepherd is like. And then Jesus, in, cha- in verses 11 onward, begins to describe his role as the good shepherd. He says, a good shepherd lays down his life. Jesus is beginning to talk about the cross, but the people that are before him don't realize what he's saying, the the picture that he's drawing. He says that, that the good shepherd, when they're threatened, the good shepherd does not flee. The one that is hired. You know how we are when we are hired? We don't care about the company. We just say, I'm just an employee. All I want is my check. We don't care about the product. We don't take the product to heart sometimes. We are just collecting a check. But here we see where Jesus says, I'm not about playing a role. I'm all in. I'm the good shepherd. There were false shepherds. In the Old Testament, they talk about the false shepherds, those who abandon the flock, those who play the role. Have you ever met anybody that is a good perpetrator at something? You perpetrate. You know how to look good, sound good. You know how to play the role. But when it's time for to stand up and take responsibility, you slink away. You watch them go in, fade into the background. No, no, I don't know who I'm talking about. I, I think some of us out here have used the term, they perpetrate and watch them. <laughs> and see, I woke you up with that, huh? Okay, so now you're back with me. Yeah, yeah, it is the ability to look the part, to play the part, but not be authentic in the part. Jesus here tells them, I am the good shepherd. This is what I'm going to do. I am going to lay down my life. I'm going to make the ultimate sacrifice. Why? Because I care about my sheep. And they know my voice. They can identify. We used to be out playing. We used to be out playing as little kids. And I'll never forget this. We were like seven and eight years old and and we would be out playing hide and seek. And the sun would be just have gone down. We, it need, you know, y'all know when you play hot, it needs to be dark. <laughs> but, but that's, y'all, wait, I got enough old school here that knows how to play hiding. See, the younger generation doesn't quite get it. But, but you know that you would go hiding, and it never fails that every time we played hiding seat right as the sun sank behind the, 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 the mountains, that, that, and, and it got a little bit dark, one of the, the participants would jump out from his hiding place. And we would go like, Rick, what are you doing? You're supposed to be hiding. He says, Mama's calling me. <laughs> and none of us could hear. But Rick heard his mama's voice. And they lived well about a half a mile away. But his mama went, Rick! And he would pop from his hiding place. Because he heard his mother's voice. Jesus says that my sheep know my voice. Those of us that were not connected to Nanny Mae Harris could not hear her voice. But Rick, her son, when she reeled that shrill voice, when he heard that over all of the other things that were going on, he would pop up from his hiding place and says, I got to get home. That is the relationship. That is the relationship that Jesus is describing. He says, he says, my sheep know my voice because they, I know them by name as we sit here this morning. Isn't it good to know that the good shepherd knows our names? That we are not sitting here in a mega church or anywhere else, but that God knows our name. We are just not. Did I tell you that we are not? We are not guests in this place this morning in this worship, but that God knows our names. 
That's good news. I forget folk name all the time. I, 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 you know, I, I'm, oh God, what is the name? Oh, all right, let's see. Oh God, I, mm, oh God, they had on such and such, and they were from such and such a place, but I cannot. The older I get, the less I know. <laughs> I think you get where I'm at this morning. You have, I had this happen the other day, this interview. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> and didn't have a clue who I was talking to. <laughs> but I guarantee you I had that conversation with him. <laughs> well, how things been going? Things been going pretty good. What about you? Oh, yeah, you know. Well, you know what? Well, well, what's going on? Tell me about what's going on in your life. And I'm trying to like, tell me something so I can remember who you are. <laughs> Maybe you will say something that will trigger my memory. And this thing went on for about eight minutes. And I'm sitting here looking at it like, God, who is this? But I was too proud to say, what's your name again? Because they kept calling my name. And which said I should have known who they were. And you know what? I still don't remember who it was. <laughs> and I feel bad. I feel bad. Well, Mike, you take care of yourself. It was so good seeing you. Call me sometime. And I said, I will if I can remember who you are. <laughs> this is the conversation I'm having with myself. I'm not playing. I said, I, and I got my phone out and I said, well, what am I putting that? What good is that going to do? Because I don't have pictures with, with the names. But then I read this text and I see where this good shepherd, this one that will lay down his life on Good Friday, knows my name. That I'm not just a statistic on heaven's roll, but God knows my name. And it says that when we hear his voice, we recognize it. This God that we serve, this God that we walk with, that we talk to, this God is the good shepherd that is going to lay down his life Do you remember when he's on the cross? He says the strangest thing when he's on the cross in the midst of suffering and pain and agony and humiliation. He says the strangest thing. I was reading it this week. He says, Father, forgive them. This is the good shepherd saying, Father, forgive them. Forgive those who have hung me up here. Forgive those who are embarrassing my divinity. Forgive those who are causing me all of this pain. Forgive those who have invited death into my Forgive them. Jesus tells them here in John's gospel, I lay down my life. You don't take it. You remember Jesus teaching? He says, love your enemy. Pray for those who despitefully use you. That if they slap you on one cheek, turn the other. Remember, 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 tell me. Yeah. I got that in Sunday school, right? I was there. Well, here you see it on the cross. You see the good shepherd turning the other cheek. You see the good shepherd loving in the midst of hate. Sometimes I think that 
we miss the whole story of Easter. Because we forget what our shepherd did on our behalf. Because he loves us. And he calls us to love as he loved. To give of ourselves in the way that he gave. Because you know his voice. Because you know that he laid down his life for you and for me. And don't forget what I just read. And he says, others. Have room in your heart for the other that Jesus talks about. He says that are not of this fold. I challenge you this morning to live your life under the care of the Good Shepherd, knowing and recognizing that he engaged in shepherding the sheep in a way that they did not understand because he was the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd that gave all of himself. Have you ever put all of yourself into something? I mean, I mean all of yourself into something. You know it's exhausting, don't you? You know it has to be intentional. You know that you do it when it doesn't feel good, when it doesn't look good, but it's because you believe in it. That's Jesus. He gave all of himself because he was a good shepherd. And he laid down his life for us. So let us daily lay down our life for him and how we love one another. Amen. 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 And amen. Let us stand for our invitation to Christian discipleship. The doors of the church are open. The invitation to Christian discipleship is extended. If there's one this morning that says, I've heard the voice of the Good Shepherd, and I recognize him, and I offer myself to him, the doors of the church are open. seated as we pray together. Let every heart that knows how to pray, let us pray together. Lord, our good shepherd, thank you for laying down your life for all of your sheep, for all of humanity, for every living creature. We say thank you for knowing who we are, for knowing how we are, for knowing what our needs are, for meeting our needs. David says that the shepherd that he knew prepared a table before him in the presence of his enemy. David says that when I'm wounded, he anointeth me. David said he would fear no evil because of the shepherd that he knew. Lord, David was talking about the good shepherd. The good shepherd that, that we just heard about. The one who does not run away in the face of of danger, the one that protects, the one that shields, the one that heals, the one that restores, the one who comes seeking, the one that is lost, the, the good shepherd. We, we say thank you for being the good shepherd that when we wandered away from the fold, you did not leave us to ourselves, but you came looking for us. 
And when you found us, if, if we were wounded, you put us on your shoulders. You took us back to the flock. You nursed us. You, you, you bound up our wounds. You, you put all on our wounds. You, you healed us. You bandaged us up. Lord, a lot of us are sitting here this morning with scars that others don't know about, but you healed the wounds. Scars are our badges that remind us what we've been through and who was there. It's times of our greatest need. Thank you. Thank you for every battle scar. Thank you for, for every place that we see the scar, but we don't feel the pain of the original infliction. Remind us today, God, that we should be able to recognize when you're speaking because we know your voice. So speak. We are listening. God, if we have in our grazing wandered too far away from the fold, please come get us. Please come get us. We've lost our way. Please come get us. Lord, I need you. I'm crying out. Please come get me. Lord, I'm here. I need you now. Come get me. Lord, that's somebody's prayer this morning. Reassure them that you are, you are aware. You hear their bleeding. You hear their cry of frustration. You hear the loneliness, the isolation. You hear it. Help them to hold on and hold out. Help is on the way. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for this blessed community that has gathered here in this sanctuary and those that are watching by live stream. Thank you that we have gathered once again. Thank you, God, that we have this moment to celebrate together. Thank you that, 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 that we are not being spoken of in the past tense, but that we are present in this moment. We know that that would not always be, but so help us to count our blessings that we're in the number one more time. In the name of the Father, the Son, in the blessed Holy Spirit, we pray this prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for being in worship this morning and being a part of this worship experience. Thank you for coming out on Tuesday night for our church conference, for our meeting to uh, have our air conditioning units replaced because they are old and antiquated and they have been patched up enough and you voted to replace them. So within the next couple of weeks, uh, all three units will be replaced. And uh, it's it, contrary to what it feel, felt like this morning, warm weather is coming. It was chilly out there this morning. So uh, we had our big coats on. And I, and I just got that feeling that we're gonna get a few more nippy, nippy mornings. I tell you, the old folk had it right. It's just like, yeah, no, don't you plant nothing yet, boy, because it ain't, it, the frost will get it. And, well, we the old folk now, so don't y'all plant nothing yet. <laughs> All right, just wait a few more, few more days, a few more weeks, and the warmer weather will come. But this, uh, after service today, as we will have a fellowship dinner, so I hope that your dinner plans are to be here at the church with us today and we break bread together and continue this fellowship downstairs. But if you have plans to go to your favorite eating place, well, you missed a freebie, all right? <laughs> you missed a freebie. So you may want to call your loved one and say, well, y'all just come on over to the church. And you say, well, well you know, I wasn't in church and it, it just, it'll just look bad if I show up just to eat. This is the church. 
And I hope you got what I just said, okay? There's no judgment here about you showing up to fellowship. So if you want to call your loved ones and tell them to come on out and, and break bread with us, that is what it's all about. Amen? Amen. All right, let us stand for our closing. of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Go from this place knowing that you have been redeemed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit.